One of my biggest struggles right now is behavioral health. PTSD, mental health issues. I've got adjustive issues. I've got an underlying lung condition. I haven't worked in the last uh, two years. I have a not so rare, but still considered rare disease called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. That's one of my issues. I am art phobic. I'll start with that. With the exception of, um, I'm obsessed with my, so my iPhone. So that's been the way that I finally later in life found a way to like an outlet for creativity. And so I love photography. It was so rad to feel like we were both talking about the intersections of like, like one person lives in a more rural area and they were like, I can either get my trans affirming healthcare or I can get my rare healthcare, but I can't get both. And I have to just decide at certain times. And I just like, it was just nice because everyone was like, oh, we like, just like get it. I mean, that's like a common theme, I think, with a disability and is where it's like, there's always this, you know, not being able to be your full self in any setting. Even in settings that seems very like accepting and open, it, it's still like, there's that I don't get it mentality. For me with prep, like I have to have a battle every time I need a refill or even just my routine testing, or I have to be the one educating my doctors on like what PrEP is, how it works, and, and how I use it personally. And, um, and that's always an awkward conversation. Now I'm like desensitized to it, but I finally found a doctor who's actually, the, he's queer. So it's like, it's amazing. It's the best doctor I've ever had so far. I'm very present when I'm taking pictures. It's like, I'm really zoomed into like, the detail and it's like I'm there right there at the point where I was suicidal and I, I couldn't be present but then photography like brought me back to like the joy of being present and the beauty in life and so I can relate to what you're saying. I love how a lot of specialists will try to convince me that it's safe for me to have a child, even with all of my complications. They're like, don't worry. We work, like literally my cardiologist, my first ever cardiologist had this conversation with me and was like, don't worry. I work with women like you all the time. We can totally do this. And I was like, I'm gay. And they were like, oh God, then have your partner do it because like, come on. And I was like, well then why the did you just say that to me? Oh, like, I understand that you want to support everyone and I get it. And a lot of women with my condition do have children, but also that seems a little irresponsible that that was your reaction. When you guys are talking about like, you know, I can go to a group and I can, you know, like, oh, I can be a mom or I can be a lesbian or I can, you know, whatever. It's like, I feel like I'm really honestly often leaving parts of myself at, out of the conversation because it just feels extraneous. Um, which is not very fun. Like, I would like to be able to bring my whole self to wherever I am. And I'm working hard to do that, like to not be in the closet about any of these things. But I also got a really, really severe concussion in college and I started painting through it because I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to play music for like four months. Oh, wow. um, yeah, it was, a, it was a really bad concussion. Yeah, it's yeah. unfortunate that, that, that I, like you were talking about, like, disabilities that aren't seen like I think a lot of a lot of people who struggle with with mental disabilities need that space like I know I do and it's cool the society is run by a gay woman like what like <laughs> I'm just just saying it's kind of awesome I really look up to her and they did throw and for queer uh, for pride month they did like a queer EDS support group and it was the closest okay. I've gotten I go to the hospital twice a week so like that's my fun <laughs> They're like, why didn't you like rent a wheelchair or a walker? The I time? hate when doctors say that. I once had a doctor say, oh, well then just don't raise your arms above your head. Right. No <laughs> joke. No, no, no. That was his serious solution. And I was like, I don't think that's going to work. And for years I just did it. I just wouldn't raise my arms above my head. And I have a really hard time advocating for myself. I just don't. Like today, coming out of my PT, remembering that to like kind of like kneel down to get that push thing, you know what I mean? And then like kick the door forward and then swing my cane out so I could like push the rest of my body out and then hope that I didn't get hit by the door. But then you always get hit by the door and oh, it's yeah. just like, fuck this, man. And like, I just been taped so I'm in so much pain that I was like, I just don't need to be hit by a fucking door right now. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't need that so specific that I feel like I'm hiding a good portion of who I am. You know, I, 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 I really got what you said earlier about like having permission to do nothing. Cause like, I'm like so hard on myself. I'm like, 
and it's and I realized I'm like why am I so hard on myself like everybody's you know struggling like everyone's just like wait how old are you again that's yeah. always like, how how old are you I'm 30 doesn't mean I'm not disabled yeah it's basically just um it was a couple years ago when I was uh homeless living on the street and uh I got really depressed and suicidal, so I went to the ER. The other one that really kills me is government buildings and medical buildings that are not accessible. But I promised myself that I would at least dedicate one hour a day to just drawing whatever for Inktober. Kind of like get myself in the art, art kind of mode. Say this, I think panicky is normal. When your body is doing something that you don't like or can't yeah. control or is uncomfortable, yep. you're going to panic. And sometimes I feel like people are like, oh, yeah, I got panicky. Like, they start to apologize. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Like, just, it's totally normal. I, like, feel like we need to talk about that more. Panicking is, like, half of having chronic illnesses, right? Yeah. And uh, was there, and they did all the normal stuff they do when you go to the ER, and then, like, uh a social worker comes in and uh, she's like, um, I, she's like, well, I, you seem like uh, you're okay just because, uh, you know, you brought yourself here. So you, you must not be that bad. And uh, I planned a bunch of trips, like based around like proximity to an emergency room or how, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I need to know where the closest one is and how yeah. long am I going to be on this plane? Because if something happens on the plane, yeah. like, just like all sorts of stuff which people are like why are you so if i had advocated myself i probably wouldn't have ended up passed out on the bus floor right yeah. i'd like this before i reached that point if i had just said like hey the bus driver like i need a seat i need to sit down or things are gonna be bad but i didn't because i was like nervous because i don't i don't look disabled by society standards it just starts to layer in how like how significant disability is and it's not something that like happened to me at like 30 or whatever like always been like this it got worse there was a there was a point but like society has developed in a way that either requires us to have to self-advocate to the to the degree that we do or that just like is so inconsiderate of just other people's ability level that it's just everybody is just like so focused on self it's just weird to me i can't travel I can't. Yeah. I went to my best friend's weddings over the last year, and then they were both in the summer. One in Manhattan. It's literally best friend of all time. I was, like, mentioned in her vows because I sure. introduced them. Like, literal oh, best friend. Got married. So it was so... I was, like, really sick, but I made it through. And then yeah. the next wedding was in August in the Poconos. And it was, like, in... It was out in the woods. And it was, again, my closest childhood friend. Yeah. So she was, like, totally chill. Like, whatever you need. But I literally was vomiting. Couldn't yeah. stop running for days. I'd already gone to the ER both times. And I literally went there, walked down the aisle. I sat down and I, in a chair they had for me at the front. And I held her hand because I was a maid of honor. Held her yeah. hand as she got married. And then literally they went to the party and I went back home. And I was like, uh, I think I need like, you know, treatment. Because I mean, that's what I'm told by like my, nor I had like a normal like therapist too. And that's what they tell you is like, if you want like, more like acute treatment or something yeah. like that to go to the ER and like yeah if you want like inpatient you know yeah like I feel like in everyday life all the time I have these small interactions that are just so much more awkward because I'm gay I don't know if you guys experience that but I'm like I can think of multiple times where like a, a PT therapist was like oh well how do you think you injured yourself you know and you're going back and I was like oh dang I have a new girlfriend this is a sex injury but sure. like my shoulder how do I explain that and then she's like talking about like using your legs to thrust and I'm like this is the most uncomfortable moment ever like I don't know what to do with this I'm gonna just tune you out until you stop talking to me you know what I mean and yeah. like she's trying so hard to be cool and I'm like you are way too young to be so uneducated about queer sex like I feel so sorry for you you know what I mean like oh my god and it just happens all the time these like little moments where it's like oh god this didn't need to be so awkward yeah, I was like, well, I came here because I'm suicidal and I want treatment for that. Right. And uh, she's like, well, I don't know if I could make it, uh, you know, fit with the insurance and all that. I had to go to the hospital because my IUD fell out, which like, that sucks. And yeah. it's because of my illness and I only have an IUD because of my illness. And so I'm there and it's like a dude ER doctor. This is the second IUD that fell out in three months. 
not Damn. happy. I was at this point like, get it the fuck out of me. And he's yeah. like taking his sweet time. And he's like, let's talk about your uh, birth control options. And I was like, no, let's not. And he's like, well, you know, next a really good choice and this and that. And I was like, I don't want to talk about this with you. Just get it out of me. You don't yeah. have any information that I need. Please leave me alone. Like, yeah, this is so uncomfortable. Like, I'm not getting birth control for the reasons that you think. And I don't need to explain to you all the reasons I do. Just go to school for a paralegal and, and maybe uh, try to work. But I can only make like $1,000 more a month uh, before they'll cut me off. So, Well, I mean, that was one friend. The other friend was like... I was also struggling, like, just getting used to my cane, and another friend was kind of like, maybe you don't walk if you're, like, really struggling, and so I ended up just, like, sitting in the first row, which is, like, a little bit of a bummer, but also I couldn't have stood through the whole ceremony, so, and she was, like, she was, like, I just want you there. You don't need to stand. That's dumb. Systemic issues of trying to keep disabled people poor and not let us climb out of. There's a huge gap where it's, like, you're poor enough, and you make too much money, and it's, like, yep. Yeah. Huge yeah. gap between the two. One time I was getting a, an injection in my hip the first time because I couldn't walk at all. And she's like, what sport do you play? It was, it was a man injecting me. So it was just a woman in the room because she like has to be the woman in the room. Do you know what I mean? Right. So, like, she has no, what sport do you play? And I was like, I look at her and I'm like 25 at this point. Legit. Like I'm not a kid. I'm not in college. I'm not very athletic looking even. Like what? I just looked at her really confused. And she just looked at me and she goes, well, how'd you hurt yourself? And I was like, I have a genetic illness. It just happened. And she was just like, like, I thought she was yeah. going like, to lose it right there. And she just didn't speak the rest of the time. 45 minutes. She just like, I wasn't even that mean. I was just like, wow, you're just so out of touch with like reality. Like you're in a medical practice. I think that there's one type of person that can get injured. Like, I don't know. You just completely don't understand that there's a whole disabled community. Like, like the reason why I, d I no longer go to the emergency room if I'm feeling suicidal is because I don't get taken care of at all. Like I sit there for 24 hours on hold. Um, they don't take you to a bed right away. They keep you in the middle of the hall where it's busy. I mean, it's probably a, diff a little bit different with COVID. I know when, when COVID first happened, I, I checked myself in and that was a nightmare. Yeah, every time I've been there, I get put in a hallway or I get put in a room close to somebody that is like a little bit more worse than me. They ignore you you try to talk to somebody they won't officially start treating you or helping you like work through your issue or crisis until you get admitted to the psych unit when this is what we experience all the time just like based on the fact that like there's huge amounts of bias against disabled people like how the fuck do you think i'm gonna like talk to all my doctors about my sexuality or my gender like i have to as an other person do the extra work that you don't make available by forms or other things so that i have to like have an awkward conversation with you and hope that you're not gonna you know, stop treating me. <laughs> it was already happening. That was already happening where they were running out of supplies and other things. And so people weren't getting treatment in general because their quality, of, they like, oh, they decide their quality of life isn't good enough. It's also horrible when you realize that like literally this is all being gatekept by doctors who generally aren't actually disabled. And so they're like, oh, I can't imagine life with a feeding tube. Well, like I can't either, but that's a very real possibility for me. And I know plenty of people who have them. You know what I mean? Or like, I can't imagine not being able to walk. I walk with a cane every day. I'd rather be alive. Thank you. My girlfriend, my ex, once literally said, like, I get what it's like to be sick like you. Like, literally said those words, and I was like, no, no you, don't. No, you don't. And I was like, you spent a lot of time with me. We live together, but you don't get it. Like, you, of most people, have a close approximation of what's happening for me. But you have no idea what it's like to be disabled. Like, you don't get it. And yeah. she paused, and she really, like, it took her, like, a day. And finally, she came back, and she was like, I really understand what you mean. And I was like, yeah you don't get it. You know what I mean? And like, it just so summarized the way she looked at, you know, the illness. Well, I had one ex that used to step over me when I was on the floor. And That's what kills me. Every time a doctor says, so you know that there's no cure for your illness. Yes. That doesn't mean you can't treat me. That doesn't mean that I can't make my life better. How dare you? How dare you say that? That's so like defeatist before we even entered a conversation. I think for me, it's been really hard. I think that for me, I feel like since then, I feel like I'm, you know, I have this this label now that I'm disabled. It took seven years to get social security. And when I got it, I just kind of felt like that label was kind of just finalized for me that I finally had this disability and like, that was it. Like I can never work again. And that was pretty difficult for me. It's just having a safe space for us to be able to discuss our illness. So we're not also having to deal with like 
fear or whatever, shame from people like not understanding. And one person put it so well, they were like, it's so hard to be in a group trying to like be open when just like my, my partner's pronouns might derail a whole conversation. Like, thank you. So it was just like one of those moments where I was like, oh, I really, I've been seeking out like disabled queer folks, kind of that intersection. And it's like, man, it's just, it's great. I appreciate this.